Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to design a dipole antenna and simulate using HFSs. So for calculating the actual length of the dipole antenna, so the formula what we use is L is equal to 143 by the resonant frequency in megahertz. So this will give you the dimension in meters. Say so for example, here I have taken the resonant frequency as 1 gigahertz, which is equal to 1000 megahertz. So when I put these values into the uh, formula, so I will get the length as 143 millimeters. Now, to simulate this antenna in HFSS, I have taken uh, the radius of the dipole as 1 millimeter, length of the dipole as 139.5 millimeters, and the length of the gap for excitation, I have taken it as 1 millimeter. Okay, now let us start with the simulation part. Okay, so to simulate, first let us create a new project. And once the new project is created, let us declare all the variables which are required for creating the dipole antenna. So here only three parameters or the three variables are there. One is the length of the dipole. I can write it as dollar DL length of the dipole. So unit is length and the length is going to be 139.5 millimeters. I will enter and I will click OK. The next one is radius of the dipole dollar dr I can write. So unit type is length and the radius is 1 mm I am choosing. The next one is for creating the excitation we need to create a gap. So the gap length dollar gl I am creating and it is length value is 1 millimeters. Click OK. So now all three variables are clear uh, created here. So let us apply and OK. Now let us start creating one by one uh, the part. Okay. So the first one is a cylinder. I will create draw cylinder here. Okay. You can rename it as dipole. And here the material you can choose it as perfect electric PEC material. You can select. You can apply. Okay. Now let us give the dimensions and the position. To get the dimensions and positions, let us start this with 0, 0, comma, and in the z-axis let us start with minus dollar dl by 2. That means it is going to start from half of the uh, dipole length. Okay, so that is, you can see here the value automatically it is calculated. It is starting at minus 69.75 millimeters. Then the radius dollar dr we can declare automatically will fit into one millimeters and the height it is going to be dollar dl that is a total length of the dipole. So once it is done you click apply and then ok. Now we can see the dipole is created here. Now the next thing is we have to create the port and excitation. To do that what I do I will just uh, copy this dipole and I will paste it. For that you can use Ctrl C and Ctrl V. So dipole, I will just rename this dipole 1, 2, port and material what we will choose is vacuum. Click apply. Okay. Now let us give the dimensions for this port. So here instead of DL it has to start from GL. We just change that uh, DL to GL and radius is same and height is GL. So if you do that, you can see a uh, port is created. So you can see here, I'll just zoom and I'll show you. You can see this is the port which is created now. Okay, so it's a cylindrical structure. Now once it is done, what we have to do? We have to uh, subtract this. Okay, select first dipole and then select port and then you go for subtract. Here we select clone objects before operation. So you can see plan part is dipole and tool part should be port. Then you can click OK. So you can see now that portion is removed. Okay. So now what you have to do? You have to select this port. Okay. Right click and then you just go to edit and here you just select surface 
and then create a section. So now we have to create the section that is the actual uh, element which is going to be excited. So it should come in YZ plane. That is the reason I am just choosing here YZ and then click OK. So now we can see a uh, conducting plane is created. For that we can give a excitation. So let us assign this as a excitation. Go to assign excitations then click on lump report. So here you can choose resistance as 50 ohm standard and then you just draw an integration line. Select new line. You just draw one line from here to see here. Now it is defined. Click finish. Done. So now we have a perfect dielectric, uh, perfect electric conductor dipole and there is a port. Okay. So next thing is we have to create a radiation box. To do that what I do, I will just right click here. I will create open region. So here the frequency of resonance that what we have chosen is 1 gigahertz. We can enter that and click OK. So after that, so here I will just go under radiations. I will just click on 3D and I will make this theta 0 to 360 degrees such that we can get a uh, full sphere radiation. Click OK. So now we can see the radiation box is there, right? I'll show you one by one. So if I just go here under boundaries, you can see open boundary. There is a radiation box. Then under excitations, we have this. Uh, one second. Yeah. Under excitations, you can see here the port is selected. You can make out that, okay? And we have a perfect electric dipole. So now. It is ready for simulation. Let us just check and before that we have to assign here analysis setup. To do that go to analysis, right click, add solution setup. So here the solution frequency we have designed it for 1 gigahertz. Let us keep it as it is and then the minimum number of passes you can put it as some 18 and then leave that maximum delta s as it is. Click OK. Then we have to add the frequency sweep. So for that click on the plus symbol. Right click on setup 1, add frequency sweep. So here you can choose, uh, say I can start from 500 megahertz. Okay, to uh, say 1.5 gigahertz, that is 1500 megahertz. So which is 1.5 gigahertz. And here I can choose linear count. So probably I can choose here, to not 1 count. So then click OK. Now let us see, uh, first we will validate whether the design is uh, correct or not. So for that click on validate, you can see everything is green, that indicates that the design is validated. Okay, now the antenna is simulated and you can see here the normal completion of simulation on server, that indicates that the simulation is over. Now we can go for the result analysis. So click on this plus symbol and here you can go to results, right click, you can create model solution data report, click on rectangular plot. So here first let us plot the S parameters. So once we plot the S parameters, we can see here, so you can select a marker and you can just uh, click at this location to understand what is the reflection coefficient at 1 gigahertz. At 1 gigahertz, you can see here it is minus 16.6129 dB, which is well below minus 10 dB and it shows a very good resonance. You can find bandwidth also. To find bandwidth, just right click here. So select marker, add Y marker and here you can just uh, click on this line, go to edit, then properties, you just enter the value here, Y value as minus 10 dB. So click next. You can see here at minus 10 dB, I'm drawing a horizontal line to trace what is the bandwidth. Here it is, uh, the upper frequency is 1.05 and lower frequency is 0 0.96, the difference is going to be uh, 0 0.09 megahertz. So that is a bandwidth that we can get. Similarly, we can understand uh, the impedance matching. So for that, create model solution data report, rectangular plot, you just click on Z parameter. Here you can plot imaginary and real parts of the impedance. So click on new report. You can see here the real part in imaginary parts here. You can click a marker, add Y marker here. 
x marker we will add so we'll add a x marker and you can see here so this one i'll just edit and uh, i'll put it at the desired frequency that is one gigahertz so let us click here you can see here the value is uh, minus 6.90 is a imaginary part and real part is 65.66 so when you take it the magnitude is going to be close to 50 oh so that indicates that the impedance matching is good. And the next graph, what we can plot is VSWR plot. We can create model solution data report, create rectangular plot here. So select VSWR and we can just click on new report. Here you can take a marker and you can place it at one gigahertz. So you can see here the VSWR is 1.3466, which is well within the limit of one to two. Then we will see the gain plots. So create far field reports. Click on 3D polar plot, and here you can see the gain and select DB. Okay. So click on new report. You can get a 3D radiation pattern here. You can see here. So a nice radiation pattern came with a gain of 2.477 dB. Similarly, you can plot E plane and H plane patterns. Create far field report. Go to radiation pattern. So gain dB you select here. Then families you select here theta is equal to zero degrees and ninety degrees. You choose ninety degrees. Then just click new report. You can see here the uh, field pattern is plotted here. Okay. So for both phi is equal to zero and phi is equal to 90 degrees, it is showing the graph. Okay. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thank you.